Actually, we're calling in from three different locations. I'm in Boston and uh, the hero Yoshi, the Fu Professor Fujimoto is in Tokyo and uh, Douglas Bond is in New York. Our pitch is about the ECOWAS, ECOWAS data collected from 2008 to 2020. The question is, did it run on conflict? If so, how did it work? What does it tell us? How do we use the data for early warning and early action? I know the title historical analysis sounds insipid. It sounds academic and boring, um, but the research result was in fact exciting. I believe it is a great progress for early warning and early action in West Africa. The potential of ECOWAS data, its quality and efforts that ECOWAS have invested for the past 12 years produced promising results. Before we start, we would like to uh, thank early warning department of ECOWAS, my brother and sisters, and um, they allowed us to use their data for this project. And this is a, uh, Overview. Listen, we're not getting into details of each item. For those who are not familiar with the ECHO-1 system, I'm going to uh, briefly introduce the core data collection activities. Then I'll jump into the result, what we found. Then our methodologies finally present a suggested procedure on how to signal the early warning and plan early actions. The scope of the study, our assessment examined um, ECHO-1 risk scores. It's calculated from CTRAPS, situation reports, situational analysis. And, um, and the escalation of conflict as in subsequent incidents and their associated human deaths. So it's about CTRAP and CTRAP risk scores and how, it, how is it related to uh, incident reports. So what is ECHOAN risk score? It's, it is collected weekly through ECHOAN system. It's a periodic form-based situational assessment by civil society and government reporters for the 15 member states of ECOWAS. There are 66 indicators across 11 groups, and the scores are categorized by three sectors, polit political, social, and economic. This, this effort is not just months and years. It's spent more than a decade by regional experts and trained people. This is really long-term endeavor by ECOWAS. So this is a sample of situational assessment form, and that we have a violence and gangs. This is an indicator. And uh, the indicator is what you, within here is called description. And uh, the current status, escalation potential, response adequacy. Actually, this, uh, this form is from the new system and we are not using um, um, the, the, the single dimensional situational assessment anymore. We're using those, the multi-dimensional approach for the data collection. And uh, just consider this is a sample of, um, of what we do for data collection. Okay, so they, those indicator, 11 indicator groups. So each indicator group has detailed indicators and uh, it, it is pretty comprehensive, as you can see here, that it covers various types of human security and activities. Also for events, echo events and incidents, event types, we focus on the conventional event elements of who did what to whom, where and when. And also we have ECOWAS customized parameters and event, event types. Of course, armed, armed actions, arrest detentions, crime, political routines, disruptions, assaults, accidents, and natural disasters. It's focused, so human deaths, injuries, women, children deaths are one of the parameters that we use for those, um, we use those parameters for this research. 
So event types in detail, just giving you some example of what kind of, what types of events we are looking at. Um, the actions, shooting, assault, homicide, including homicide, abduction, detention, various types of crimes. A political routine is more like a press conference and a cabinet reshuffle. Disruption is riot, violent demonstration, accidents, and natural disasters. But we ruled out accidents and natural disasters. These are unforeseeable, as we cannot forecast accidents and natural disasters unless we have supernatural power, fortune telling crystal ball kind of things. And uh, the, uh, the unit of analysis for our study is a country and week. The incidents as the dependent variable and we're setting CITREP week then aggregate events happen in the time frame. So, we need, the, we need to apply lags to match the date range that CITRAP is looking and its realization. CITRAP, let's say CITRAP happened, uh, CITRAP was recorded for week one. Then they're not looking at events in week one. They are, they, they, the, CITRAP, uh, the CITRAP addresses the coming weeks. The scope is weeks, not months. So we limited uh, the scope to month. And, uh, but combined, aggregated, combined increps from week two, two and three as one group, one, one option, week two, three, four as the second option. So we analyze both cases. So Citrib is looking three months and uh, three weeks later and uh, for the one group week two and three and week four. And um, the incident happened in week two and three, we aggregate that as a, as a cluster, event incident cluster. So how long does the situational observation extend? And uh, we, with, uh, we consider this is uh, no more than three weeks from the date they composed the citra. So our findings, the results of the studies, this is good news, that on risk of score do signal incidents and human deaths. The, and the, those results are statistically significant. The overall score presented positive correlation across all event types. The overall score is mean of social, pol political, and uh, economic scores. And the social score showed the, uh, the best performance actually. The, the higher the social score, the greater chance of incidents in the field. And uh, to, uh, for the machine learning approach, we found out that the majority of the situational indicators are individually correlated to the occurrences of incidents. So ec one risk score is very useful. That was our conclusion. And uh, let's get into the details. Econometrics. So the first approach that we use was econometrics. It's a binomial regression. Um, and the social score, uh, right, riot and violent demonstration. And uh, for example, the riot and violence, violent demonstration, which is a political disruption, if 10 point increase in the social score, there will be 14% more likelihood of a political disruption. Human, it's the same thing goes with human death and, and risk of scores. 10 point increase in the political, e economic and social score will increase the number of human deaths. This is the only warning, only warning of human deaths. So for political score, we have 8%, economic score 9% and social score 12%, which is pretty good number here respectively. And uh, and the risk, is, this table shows a risk score correlation by event type. So we are looking at the armed actions, positive correlation with political uh, risk score and uh, positive, also positive for, uh, for social, but economic is negative. And um, for economic, the arrest, crime, the routine and disruption is all positive and uh, it, as I said, the, the best performance came from the social score, social risk score. It's all positively related to the, all the event types. 
and uh, the overall score as well. So if you see the high the increase of the risk score, there are good chance of armed actions, arrest detentions, those event types will happen in an area of reporting in the country in the Equus case. And um, from, from this point forward, I'm going to give the floor to, uh, to my colleague, the hero, Fujimoto. He's, uh, he's teaching at Kaichi University in Japan. And he's an economist by training. And uh, he's, he uh, took the part. He, he will uh, present his, uh, his art of econometrics from this point. Got to mute yes. myself. Thank you, Sean. Uh, here, I would like to talk about the regression part a little bit more in detail. Uh, we estimated basically two regression models. One is logistic regression, where the dependent variable is a binary variable showing if each event has happened or not. Uh, the other one is negative binomial regression, where dependent variable is a count of each event. Uh, each of these results or estimations are translated into odds ratio and incident rate ratios, which are easier to interpret. Uh, I will show a few of the estimation results. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the table here shows the estimation result of logistic regression. Overall score, which is expected to be a predictor, is regressed on binary variable of any type of incident occurrence. The red part is the estimate of coefficient of the risk score. Uh, the lower part of the table shows the coefficient of country dummy of 15 countries. Now you can see in the red box, the coefficient of overall risk score is positive and significant at the level of 1%. This means higher overall risk score implies higher possibility of some kind of incident happening in the next two weeks. Next, please. Then odds ratio is calculated based on the, uh, that result. The ratio of the overall risk score in the red box is about 1.022. This means one point increase in overall score implies 2.2% increase in the probability of incident in the next two weeks. Uh, similar estimation is conducted for disaggregated event data and different time lags. And we saw that in every case, the overall score is positively associated with uh, incident variables. Okay, um, the, in this slide, uh, this is the result of negative binomial regression. In this estimation, three risk scores, political, social, and economic scores are regressed on the count data of any type of incident occurrence in the next two weeks. In this case, uh, coefficients of all three risk scores are positive, and two of them, social and economic scores, are significant at 1%, while political score is uh, also significant at only 10%. Uh, still, higher number of these three scores are positively associated with the number of incidents in the next two weeks. Next, please. Here, uh, incident rate ratio is calculated based on the negative binomial result. Uh, according to the result, for example, uh, one point increase in the social score implies 1.05% increase in the number of incidents in the next two weeks. Uh, to, put, uh, to put it differently, 10 point increase in the social score is associated with about 11% increase in the number of incidents. Uh, next, please. Uh, in this table, incident rate ratios are calculated similarly, but the dependent variable is now political disruption. According to the estimates, 10 point increase in the social score will increase the number of political dis uh, disruption in the next two weeks by 14.6%. Next, please. Uh, this, is, this result is using the number of deaths as a dependent variable. Uh, we can see that these three risk scores are positively associated with the death count with statistical significance. 
Again, similar model was estimated using disaggregated event data. And so that uh, we saw that uh, many cases, the risk scores are positively associated with incident variables. Uh, that's all, Sean. Okay, thank you, um, Hiro, and uh, for your your science for your science and the econometrics. Let's move on to uh, the, about the social score. So why social score is more significant than others. So in the social indicators, social risk score, the components of social risk score, we have gang operations, cultural discrimination, health care and health care and school open community distancing. But, but somehow those social indicators show the best performance. Related, related to all types of incident, if, if you observe the skyrocketing social score, social risk score, the area is in clear and present danger. Gangs, culture, health, um, health culture, healthcare, school, community look a bit trivial, but these indicators are real killers than politics, according to our research. We'll address why. Why did, did, did this thing happen for our upcoming research? And uh, I think ECOWAS folks have a better uh, answer for the for our for those kind of questions. And economic also was pretty good performance as uh, as a uh, hero pointed out. The food prices, migrant labor, markets open; those are very significant. But a bit disappointing. But the pol political indicators are um, you know, less significant than other two social and economic risk scores. But still, and uh, we need to explain why the political didn't show the best performance among those three. Among those three. So um, the next slide and econometrics and machine learning. So we did machine learning. Well, you know, we, it's, it's, it's buzzword for everywhere, the ML and AI. And econ econometrics and ML, actually that those are mutually help each other to define the in correlations among the situation scores, questionnaire relations and responses, event types, and the human deaths and more features. And econometrics provides, as you say, the, the overview of the correlation and useful for historical analysis. But what if we have, like Act one have a more than million data entries to analyze? In that case, ML regression is very useful because we, processed 5 million data points and uh, within 30 minutes. And that was the power of ML. Um, in, the, in the ML research design, and well, the image displays a classification metrics for the top five models from one of our test attempts. I don't do the stuff. I just run the program and the, the computer does it all and give me the most suitable. Again, this is the early stage of experimenting machine learning. We don't have a many moving parts here, except time, location, and the week of situation reporting. The econometrics demonstrated quite compelling results. ML is very useful to analyze individual indicators. The number is more than, if the number, the, the data point is more than a million, like ECOWAS data. And the ML predicted crime in, the, in, in ECOWAS, a, a, the region. So the first row is economic expected occurrences, the count of human deaths. So in looking at the crop livestock disease, if a field monitor responded value number one, value number one is bad. It's, um, it's bad stuff. And number five is good, one through five the lower, the better. So if the situation is bad, there will be five, uh, five crime and in, 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 uh, for, for, the, uh, for the indicator of crop livestock disease. If there's a pastoral conflict in the area, this is from, uh, from the CITRAPS. And uh, if the value is bad situation, indicated bad situation, we're gonna have a 10 pastoral conflict. And you see some anomalies here. And uh, we, well, due to the uh, nature of a machine learning, we, I have to investigate 
further to find out why those are number are increasing in the response of five. Even, even if the situation, if the field monitors responded, the situation is not bad, it's good. But the, the crime occurrence went up. But, um, but we'll explain that later um, in the further study that we will be conducting. And if the food price here is slightly going, going low than rising. So this is expected because food price Value number one indicates um, the significant increase or decrease in the price of the, the basic food items. So increasing is a well, which is a which is which is negative, and decreasing is also a negative sign. So the middle value gets zero, zero weight, means it's it goes bi-directional. So these those anomaly we they have to answer, but uh, we are still working on the, um, the 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 ML result that we have produced for this study. The next one is machine learning approach. Yeah, another machine learning approach and cover this can uncover hidden links. So in the the question number thirty one, is the schools open? A student attendance at classes dropped significantly or schools closed. If attendance could drop or schools are closed, there will be on action. 96% chance of on action will happen in that area. It's a hidden link. I, mean, I never expected that this because the school normally, uh, the natural way of sequence is on action happened, then school closing will follow. We all know that. If tension escalates, parents hesitate to send their kids to school. But we need to research this. We, 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 uh, I don't have answer yet, but it was a hidden link. The student attendance at classes or schools closed are highly correlated with the armed action. If armed action occurred in the area, schools are hard to remain open, but this is the opposite. So, very interesting result that we have. We have more of this and, um, in, in our research. So what can we do with this risk of scores and the, its correlation with events, uh, the incidents? It's from risk to cost. It's from ambiguous risk to management. We had ambiguous risk of scores, but this study discovered that we can convert risk to future incidents. We all, we know, now we know what will happen, then it is a matter of cost and management from uh, to prevention and mitigation management. The political, economic, social, or individual indicator responses suggest that when, what will happen in where, so think about what you could do with those information. We can deduct action of items from risk scores. Now we know that what are likely to happen, what types of incident in the, in the country. So from early warning to early action, the organization, the ECOWAS prepares what and how to respond if, for instance, armed conflict is likely to happen. So with, if, uh, if you know the armed conflict will happen in some area, you can plan actionable items in advance and estimate cost and schedule the action commitment and commit the effective countermeasures on time because we know the, um, the, what will happen so we can plan that ahead. So not only um, the responding to uh, upcoming incidents, we can put efforts to reduce risk of score. The reduce risk of score means reduce incidents and human death, prevent human death and incidents. Reduce um, and to all the actions, efforts reduce scores should be optimized. And, uh, and efforts to, um, to reduce scores means prevent future incidents and human deaths from happening. To do, we should broaden our focus beyond the likely security incidents and consider conflict prevention and management actions to reduce risk of score, scores. So think about, we have 66 indicators in the historical uh, database. 
and the 60, we, if you flip the 66 indicators, there will be actions. So schools are closed, then you can, um, and then you can focus your resources to uh, make school open. If food price is unstable from the situational assessment, we can try to minimize it. Of course, this is not easy. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying this is easy, and at least it's, but at least this gives you in the indication that the in the, what the situational risk scores can tell us what to do. It's warning and only action, and this implies that it tells us detailed items what to do. It's not easy. We all know that, but we are just in, in, introducing an approach, and uh, we sincerely hope this could help ECOWAS and early warning department in the future. So we have a work in progress and uh, this preliminary study is the beginning. And we all, you, you, may, um, you may know that. And uh, inclusion of detailed events. So we can expand this event sets to, uh, to other events, uh, event data, uh, event database like news events or ACLED or GDEL. If you if you could, because the CITRAP risk scores are compatible with any event database, so putting additional data set is no brainer. It's, it's just piece of cake, and then that can il illustrate what to do and how to respond in more detailed level. And the situational scores we have only three sectors: social, economic, and political but we can expand the situation scores for the 11, uh, 11 indicator groups. Also, we can apply the structural data to it because we all know that Nigeria is the biggest country and the most populous country in the region. And that has to be considered in terms of uh, counting events and uh, the magnitude event in events. And finally, the seasonal effects. So it's like, um, um, Ramadan is happening, and you have some like specific events would happen in the, during the Ramadan, or is it, it inhibit incidents from happening? And uh, the it modify framework for the new Equon data data system. The new system has the better framework, but this framework is for historical data analysis. Well, we need to modify the framework for the new system and the, the data collected from the new system. And also, this is a little bit ambitious, but I want to have, have a web application as a developer, as an engineer. So I want to build a web application to show the results in near real time. So this is the uh, end of my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions for, uh, for me, for Hero, or for Doug, Doug Bond, and, uh, just raise your hand. Nope. Okay, I think um, this is the end of my presentation. Just wanted to, uh, to share, because I recently watched a movie uh, called Tenet, and and there was a very interesting uh, line from the movie and no one cares about the bomb that didn't go off. I think this is the dilemma that uh, all early warning, all early response people are facing. The, the people saving the world. So, but people, they don't, they, don't, they don't care about the bomb that didn't go off. So we need ideal time to engage, to, uh, to make ourselves useful. For example, I, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I, I prevent stuff from happening, but the people, they, they have no idea what, what would have happened. So, well, this is just a piece of joke that I wanna add. And uh, okay, thanks, uh, thanks Taya. Taya for the comment. My hand is raised, Sean. Oh yeah, I see it. Um, yep. Yeah, Can please go ahead. Yep. 
Esther. Uh, Sean, you, you, knew, you knew I wasn't going to let that comment you made uh, go by without asking for more clarification about school closing, mm -hmm. the indicator of armed action. Armed action, um, yes. I think, I, think, I think this is reflective of um, the peculiar security situation in the region whereby education uh, facilities schools, um, mm -hmm. if you like, um, are always in the mix of, of, of um, insecurity. Mm -hmm. and we uh, I just um, okay. I'm not quite sure if our GIS person is here. Ismaila. GIS, uh, yes. I, yes. The reason I say that is because um, we did some hotspot mapping um, recently, looking at cross-border issues um, and school closures and insecurity. And of course, there was a very clear correlation. But what is interesting in what you say is what comes before um, what. And I'm hoping that we can explore this uh, together to have a better understanding. Of, of how you came to this conclusion. And there's mm -hmm. a correlation for sure and for certain, um, I think that's evident. Um, but when you um, say, uh, I can't remember exactly the words that you used, uh, that this is, uh, that the school closing is indicative of the armed action and not vice versa. Um, I, I think it would be interesting for us, and when I say us, I, I, uh, our systems uh, division to, to explore further how, how you came to this, um, to this conclusion that we agree with. It would just be interesting to know the methodology and the process. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so I, it, this is so mystery that um, we have, um, why school open, the school remain open and the armed action are related? I think uh, you might have a better, um, better sense of that. Uh, yeah, there are still a lot of, Hidden, uh, hidden links and uh, uncovered um, items that we can discuss about uh, in terms of the situation risk rating, uh, situational risk scores, and uh, the, the incident incidents. But um, we'll see, and uh, we will share our uh, paper when it's published, uh, with of course with the Equus uh, folks, and uh, will be publicly available. And upon your permission, of course, and uh, we'll discover uh, some more interesting uh, links from uh, between the um, the situation risk scores and maybe even broader the event set. Okay, so any more questions? Okay, so uh, let's wrap this up and uh, we will, uh, I'm gonna share my email address here. And uh, Hero will share his, uh, his email address. So you have a questions about econometrics and uh, anything about the numbers, ask Hero or me, uh, we, we work together, so. Mm. Let me see. Uh, no, it was Esther. Takeaways, Echo One, then maybe applicable to wider region outside of M. M yes, yeah. Echo, if actually the the indicators are quite universal. And uh, for example, like school open, and uh, this can. Uh, be applied to uh, East Africa or Southern Africa, any, any region in the world. But the thing is, there's some African specific indicators that we have in the, system, um, in the, in the area, for example, like um, um, the cultural uh, conflict. In that case, we can, we can modify that, but mostly we can focus on the uh, Sustainable Development Goal, SDG of UN, United Nations for other developing countries or suffering by conflict in the areas. So yeah, Robert, and um, we can use, this is a quite universal and uh, I think it can be applied to uh, any region from my perspective. Yeah, um, let's wrap up and um, have a, have a nice one and thanks for having me. And uh, Doug, do you wanna add something?
Doug, you're there? Hello, Dr. Bond? I think he's having a technical difficulties. Great, hey, let's wrap this up and uh, have a good one and stay safe. Take care, you guys.